Hey everyone, welcome back to The Road to Superman. This is episode 45, and we have some fantastic news regarding this movie. It looks like people are hearing more information about the Superman film as post-production goes on and on, and this makes complete sense. More people within the studio are seeing the film being made, and it's no longer confined to the people working on the sets. Now you have editors, color graders, VFX artists, and so many other departments all seeing the film as it gets completed. So it's no surprise that we are now hearing more about the film, and today's information is very, very interesting. This report comes from Daniel RPK, who tends to be correct on most things he says, but as always, let's take this with a pinch of salt. I would also say this isn't spoilery as we don't hear anything about the plot, so don't worry. So Daniel RPK has said, I've also heard that the new Superman movie is fantastic, and they're going all out. It's a complete shift to hardcore sci-fi fantasy, the exact opposite of Man of Steel. It's set in a world very different from ours and far removed from the DCEU. Heroes have been around for ages and we'll see how it affected this world's history and has shaped the DCU. The DCU will feature various projects set across different timelines, not just present day. So more in line with the approach of Star Wars than Marvel. Now this is really fascinating. Fascinating. So let's break it down sentence by sentence. Firstly, I've also heard that the new Superman movie is fantastic and they're going all out. This is great news. Obviously, opinions on films are subjective, so this isn't a fact, but it is great to see that the other day BSL was told a person who had seen clips from the movie loved it, and now Daniel RPK is stating the movie is fantastic. So this is very promising. And they're also going all out. So they're putting absolutely everything into this film, and that's what you want to hear. I've said it before, but this movie may have the most pressure of any DC movie ever. If people hate it, then the DCU will be screwed, and I'm pretty sure Gunn and Safran would lose their jobs. The movie is vital to the future of the DCU, so I'm glad they're putting their heart and souls into this movie. He goes on to say, it's a complete shift to hardcore sci-fi fantasy, the exact opposite of Man of Steel. And I love this. It means we are getting a fresh and unique take on this character. I love Man of Steel because it felt like Superman was in our world, and it was so interesting to see how our actual society would react if Superman and other heroes existed. It was extremely thought-provoking for me, but that's not the only style or take that can work. I also like the idea of superheroes being in a full-on sci-fi fantasy world, one that feels like true escapism. I think that gives you more freedom with costume designs and storylines because you're not constrained to the realism of our world. This also means when watching this film, it won't feel like a copy of the previous Superman movie. It's set in a world very different from ours, and far removed from the DCEU. Perfect. I loved the idea of the DCEU being realistic and modern, but if you're going to reboot the universe, you want it to feel different to what it's replacing. Otherwise, why get rid of the old universe? So this is great to hear. I also think this is why characters like Peacemaker are able to stick around, because I always felt those characters felt too out of place in the DCEU, but they should feel more home in the DCU. However, if it was up to me, I still would have rebooted all the actors, but it's happening the way it is, so I'm just going to get on with it. Heroes have been around for ages, and we'll see how it affected this world's history and has shaped the DCU. The DCU will feature various projects set across different timelines, not just the present day, so more in line with the approach of Star Wars than Marvel. And this is really fascinating. So we knew the DCU starts with heroes being around for a while, but it is intriguing to see that we will go through time to see different stories in the DCU, similar to how Star Wars does it than Marvel. I also think the fact that heroes have been around for a while will also play a part into the mentality of people within the timeline. Like how the government or general public may see heroes, and I reckon they don't really like heroes anymore. I think the superheroes lost their way or had never really been true heroes to begin with, and in this Superman movie, Superman inspires them to be better. He shows them a better way to save the
the day, and I think that is such a Superman thing to do. To not just conform to how other heroes are, and instead stand up for what he believes in, and actually inspires a whole load of heroes to be better. And overall, this information from Daniel RPK is really promising. I'm loving what I'm hearing. I don't want a carbon copy of previous iterations of the character, and I'm open to new takes on Superman. I am slightly hesitant with the hardcore sci-fi fantasy description, purely because I don't want it to get to the point where things are just stupid. I think even in a comic book world, some things do have to be changed for the big screen. Sure, this universe can be far closer to comic books than other stories, and I really like that idea, but let's not go too over the top. And that is a concern of mine with Gunn. I think he is a really good director, but I do think he goes over the top sometimes, and it's always what I don't like about his movies. So hopefully, he gets the right balance with that. But the rest of what I'm hearing is great. Even the part where he says it's the exact opposite of Man of Steel. That movie is my favourite film of all time, so my reasoning for being happy it is completely different isn't through hate. It's because I want refreshing takes. If I basically saw a Man of Steel 2.0 with this Superman film, I'd be very upset because I would be asking why didn't they just continue with Cavill's story? And I know myself and others out there would be bashing Gunn for copying Snyder. This also means the movie will be different to Christopher Reeve's Superman movies, a version of the character a lot of haters claimed Gunn's movie would be a cheap copy of. Reeve's Superman, whilst a lot lighter than Cavill's, was still set in a relatively realistic world, and wasn't very sci-fi fantasy. Maybe that was due to the time it was released in, but still, it wasn't as sci-fi fantasy as this movie is being described as. So Gunn is setting himself apart from both of the most famous takes out there. Now, I posted this information on my Instagram account, not expecting much backlash, but it's fair to say that they think this is divisive news. I don't know how, but it's social media. People who love Man of Steel are getting really defensive of Daniel RPK's description, which I don't get. They're saying the movie is going to be terrible because of this news, but if the movie was the same as Man of Steel, they'd then be complaining that Gunn was copying Snyder. James Gunn really can't win either way with some people. They just want to complain, no matter what what it is about. Hopefully here on YouTube though, you guys are more optimistic and positive about this news because I really don't get how this can be turned into a negative. Because this is directly referring to being hardcore sci-fi fantasy, which I don't think Man of Steel is. I think it is hardcore sci-fi, but not the fantasy part. If you read into the rest of Daniel RPK's comments, you see he talks about the world the movie is set in. Man of Steel was set in a realistic world, not a fantasy world. Those two worlds are complete opposites of one another. Superman will be set in a fantasy world closer to comic books than real life. So that is what RPK is referring to when he says it is polar opposite to Man of Steel. And by me saying it will be set in a fantasy world closer to comic books than real life, then that means it will be goofy and stupid. It just means it won't be similar to the real world that we live in. If you don't like that concept, then that's fine. I would suggest re-watching the movies that are set in a real world because the DCU probably won't be for you. I don't know if it will be for me, but we shall see when the movies come out. Out. But I have to say, there is nothing wrong with Superman being completely different to Man of Steel. As someone who has Man of Steel as their favourite movie of all time, I think this is great news. It doesn't concern me one bit. And I've also seen people criticising it, saying, why does it need to be compared to Man of Steel? Well, because it's a rebooted Superman story. It's important to know why this movie is different to the previous Superman film. And people compare Superman the movie to Man of Steel. It's just what you do with reboots of the characters. You compare them to the biggest and most popular versions of those characters. So it seems like people are extremely defensive and protective of Man of Steel, which is great because it shows that you love it, but this isn't anyone criticising the film. It's just an observation as to why this movie is different. And it's a great observation. I don't want to see a carbon copy of any Superman movie. If I wanted to see that film, I'd see the original. I want something new and fresh, and that's what it sounds like Gunn is doing. So this is great news, and I'm standing by that until I see the movie. Now, let me know your thoughts on Daniel RPK's report in the comments below.
Hopefully you guys are more optimistic about this news, but we shall see. To end today's video, I want to talk to you guys about the competition Superman has at the box office. On July 2nd, the new Jurassic World movie releases, then just over a week later, Superman releases, and then just under two weeks after that, Fantastic Four comes out. So Superman has some major competition in July, and this could be concerning for the box office. People will pick and choose which films they are going to see. Cinema tickets are expensive, especially for IMAX, so people won't be willing to spend that much on three movies in one month. And Superman is being squeezed in between the two. And it's a little worrying. I said Superman needs to make at least $600 million to be a success, and I think it will struggle with these two huge movies releasing around it. So what do you think they should do? Should they market the hell out of the film to try and pull people to this movie over the competition, or do you think they should move the release date to some time where less movies are being released? Personally, I think they should stick with their release date to show confidence in the movie and just utilize marketing as much as they can. Deadpool and Wolverine did a fantastic job at their marketing and it hit over a billion dollars at the box office. I think if they can utilize the Super Bowl in February and continue incredible marketing from that point onwards, then they can really get a strong opening weekend and that will help them reach that $600 million mark. But let me know what you guys think. I'd be intrigued to see what you guys think DC Studios should do with the Superman movie release date. But that is all for today's episode of The Road to Superman. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an episode. I hope to see you here again soon. So until then, have a great day. Bye.